Tesla has been on fire lately, and we are going to look under the hood to see if this company has the wheels to take us far. In addition to Tesla, if you stick around until the very end, we have a bonus mini deep dive on EQ Bank. Fasten your seatbelts, folks. This is going to be a good one. Unless you have been living under a rock, you more than likely have heard of Tesla and, of course, the saga of Elon Musk. Well, you know, being Elon. Tesla is that little electric car company that refuses to fail, and despite the economic downturn and some very heavy losses, still has the power to get some investors, well, pretty darn excited. Is that excitement warranted? We are going to find that out. After we finish waxing the Tesla, we will also be taking a quick look at EQ Bank and see what the fundamentals say about this online financial up-and-comer. Do they have the math to compete with the big boys? That we're also going to find out in this video. This is your chance to join in on the conversation. Let us know in the comments if you have an electric car or if your next car is going to be electric. Your comments are well appreciated. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date on future content and thank you for that click. Tesla is an American electric vehicle and clean energy company that was founded back in 2003. The company was named after Nikola Tesla, who was a famed electrical engineer who invented the Tesla coil as well as the first alternating current motor. Getting back to the Tesla car company, their initial focus was on producing electric sports cars and the first one was the Tesla Roadster in 2008. Since then, they have expanded their lines and added luxury electric vehicles, energy storage systems, and even solar panels. Car-wise, we saw the Tesla Model S in 2012, which won Car of the Year, the first time an electric car ever won Motor Trend's prestigious award. The Model S was also the first electric car to have a range greater than 300 miles per charge. Tesla followed this model up with Model X SUV and the Model 3, which has become one of the best-selling EVs in the world. To support their EVs, they also built a large network of superchargers so people could have more travel options as there was a greater availability of fast charging stations. Tesla has also had a commitment to sustainability that can be seen with their energy products, which include the Powerwall home battery, the Powerpack commercial scale battery, and their solar roof products. One of the company's missions is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. That's pretty respectable if you ask me. Of course, Tesla has struggled in 2022, thanks mostly to supply chain disruptions, and more specifically, those semi conductor shortages. They also had issues with production at some of their factories and began to experience increased competition from traditional car makers as they start moving into the EV market. They also face challenges in ramping up production of their new Model Y SUV, as well as some expansion woes with their plans to expand more into Europe and Asia. All of these issues and some more colorful issues created by, well, Elon helped tank the Tesla stock in 2022 by a staggering 65%. Normally, that is the type of drop that scares investors but yet people are starting to feel some excitement. Well, yeah, about Tesla again. Is this excitement justified? To answer that, we need to visit our friend, Mr. Math. We will start with some surface data. Tesla has a market cap of $543.13 billion. That does sound like a lot. However, in November of 2021, they did have a market cap of $1.23 trillion. Wow, that just gives you a good indication of how much they fell. Their beta comes in at 2.03, thus they are roughly twice as volatile as the market average. They have an EPS of 3.24 and a diluted EPS of 3.03. There has been quite a bit of dilution as well as some insider selling. Elon Musk currently holds 13.42% of Tesla shares. This is after he has sold off 8.92% of Tesla shares. Their price to earnings ratio comes in at 41.90 compared to the average 8.10 PE ratio in other cars car manufacturers. In Tesla's case, a good part of this P.E. ratio being so high is their explosive growth and continued expansion. Their price to book ratio comes in at 11.80, which is also high, but once again, this is part of their expansion and is kind of normal. When we look at their return on equity, we get 32.41%, which is actually not bad at all. If we look at their revenue, it comes in at $81.46 billion. Their earnings come in at $12.56 billion. Those earnings are, of course, forecast to grow 18.47% per year. As for their free cash flow, we do not have a Q4 2022 number yet, but it was $8.9 billion at the end of Q3. Before we look at growth, what is a fair value 
value for Tesla. According to their discounted cash flow model, their fair price comes in at $168.34, which makes them 1% undervalued. Now focusing on growth, Tesla does not have any dividends, so we will jump right away to their return on investment numbers. Starting with their three-year growth, we saw their share price rise from $53.33 to $172.05. This is a return on investment of 222.61%. Holy banana bread, that's not too shabby. If we look at 2022, if we look at 2022, their share price started the year at $382.58 and closed out at $123.18. That gives us an ROI of negative 67.8%. That is definitely quite the drop. So far in 2023, we began at $118.47, and at the time of recording, we are at $142.05 for an ROI so far this year of 19.90%. That is absolutely fantastic for just a single month. Let us switch gears now and go over and take a look at their debt. Tesla has a total debt of $2.04 billion, and they have a total equity of 45.90 zero billion. That gives them a very low debt to equity ratio of 4.5%. That is a number I can totally, totally get behind. When we look at the short term, their assets come in at 40.92 billion compared to 26.71 billion in liabilities. On the long term, their assets come in at 41.42 billion compared to 9.73 billion in liabilities. I do love this picture. I especially love that their short term assets shadows way over their long term liabilities. This is absolutely a great debt picture, and it is always good to see that there is ample room for additional debt if a company needs it. So, what is the final word on Tesla? This is a company that has fantastic fundamentals, and that should really translate into some serious growth in the future. You still have the wild card called Elon, who can cause a little bit of trouble, but I suspect this company has the depth to overcome that. This is a company that my opinion after the deep dive has really improved. As Canadians, we have many investment options once we have done our due diligence on Tesla. There is investing in Tesla itself in a USD account, or you can purchase it through a CDR, or even invest in a purpose yield fund for Tesla. Whichever is your choice, I think this is a good long-term investment. Wait, 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 stop the music. We've got a little bit more to do here. We have a mini deep dive on EQ Bank as a reward for sticking through to the end. A mini deep dive is like a regular deep dive, but without all the frills. EQ Bank is a digital bank based in Canada that offers a range of financial products and services, including savings accounts, checkings accounts, and GICs. It is a subsidiary of Equitable Bank, one of the largest independent Schedule One banks in Canada. EQ Bank operates completely online and offers competitive competitive interest rates on its savings accounts, as well as free transactions and other features that are designed to make banking more convenient and accessible for its customers. Let's not ramble any further, let's jump right into the math. EQB has a market cap of $2.46 billion and a beta of $1.75. Their earnings per share come in at 8.69 and there has been some dilution in the last year. Their P-E ratio is 7.55 compared to an average of 12.10 from similar financial institutions. Their latest revenue came in at $710.30 million and they had earnings of $300.07 million. Those earnings are forecast to grow by 16.67% per year. Their free cash flow is negative $4.20 billion, which is a little concerning. As for their fair value, it comes in 53% undervalued, as per, of course, a discounted cash flow model. Shifting over to growth, they do have a dividend with a yield of 2.033%. This is paid out quarterly in the amount of $0.33 cents per share. Their payout ratio comes in at a very manageable 12%. Their three-year ROI comes in at 21.04% for a total return of 23 3.07%. 2022 has an ROI of negative 19.06%. Adding in the dividends, we have a total return of negative 17.02%, which is absolutely in line with the TSX drop for 2022. This year so far, they have an ROI of 15.52%. That is looking pretty good. Let's jump over to their debt. They have a total debt of $13.40 billion, and their total equities come in at $2.16 billion. This makes their debt-to-equity ratio 
ratio, 619.7%. That is not a particularly nice number. Their short-term assets come in at 2.03 billion compared to 25.22 billion in liabilities. The long-term does look better as their assets come in at 38.12 billion compared to 12.77 billion in liabilities. So what is the final word on EQ Bank? Banks carry debt. That is just part of what they do. And despite the oodles of debt we have here, it is not as bad as it seems. They are forecast to grow their earnings and there is a growing need for the services that they do offer. This is a bank that will be okay, though it will never fully compete with the big six or achieve a blue chip status. However, there is some good growth potential here and many analysts even believe it can grow its share price by 23.8% in the next year. This is not a bad long-term growth play. It's not a stock if dividends are your main focus though. Keep the learning growing. Watch my video on cover call ETFs linked on the left or test YouTube's recommendation skills by checking out the video on the right. Your choice will decide the winner. See you in the next video.